1 Kings 21, we read about King Ahab. And once again, King Ahab is a great example. One of the best examples we have in 1 Kings of how not to live and how not to behave. You see, we see King Ahab greedily coveting and enviously seeking to buy a vineyard owned by a man named Naboth. And Naboth's vineyard, you see, it was right beside Ahab's palace. And Ahab wanted that vineyard to use as his own vegetable garden. However, Naboth refuses to sell it because it's an inheritance from his ancestors. And if you kind of know your biblical history, this has way more to do with Naboth being a God-fearing Israelite, obeying the Mosaic law to not permanently sell his inheritance, more so than it does just as a maybe sentimental desire to keep the vineyard in the family. Naboth, from what we can tell, he's seeking to stay true to God by obeying his word. Well, Ahab's wife, Jezebel, she develops an evil, a deceptive plan to have Naboth falsely accused and stoned to death so that Ahab can have what he wants. He can have that vineyard. And through the prophet Elijah, God corrects and rebukes Ahab and pronounces a severe judgment that'll come upon he and his wife Jezebel for their greed, their covetousness, their, their evil scheming that led to Naboth's death and stealing the vineyard. Interestingly, this chapter ends with Ahab repenting and the Lord actually telling Elijah that he will delay the judgment upon his life and it'll be carried out on future generations. We know the full story of Ahab's life, that his repentance, it was kind of short-lived. But in his mercy, the Lord gave him another opportunity to turn from sin and to obey God. In 1 Kings 21, it serves as a cautionary tale against greed and envy and the destructive nature of our actions. And we must learn to be content with what we have, avoid envy, and consider the consequences of our decisions. But even more than that, we should see God's mercy in the life of a man who did not deserve it. You see, King Ahab goes down in history as one of the most wicked, the most rotten kings in all of Israel's history. And yet, God shows mercy. And so, as there are a lot of lessons in this chapter, one of the key takeaways for today is a reminder that if you humble yourself, if you repent, you can receive the mercy and the grace of God available to us all in Christ Jesus.